Attempting to alert a perfectly broadside blacktail buck might seem like an odd idea, but for our purposes today, it's probably in our best interest. So we're carrying the 223, and what I want this buck to do is either face us or face away from us and kind of present a neck shot. None of that is really gonna work too good. So when he steps around, we might see if he does something a little bit better. Kind of like that. And I'm pretty sure we did get into the neck. The 223 is just underpowered enough that it actually isn't an immediate drop shot. And this is kind of a throwback to one of my favorite videos that we've ever done, which was a 223 only hunt over on Hirschfelden. But when we did that, things were a lot less limited than they are now. So we're gonna have to make some changes, but the basic concept is gonna stay the same. Now this was a pretty high estimate level four Blacktail, and he actually is a 170 plus, so just about six below Diamond. But we got that shot through the middle neck, and as we saw, he definitely ran for a couple of seconds before going down. And that does kind of highlight the reason why we're going for like neck shots and stuff like that, because if we do go for a lung shot, the deer's gonna run pretty far, and that makes it tough to be efficient, but it's a lot more fun to require that accuracy because we could just make the vital hit and still get the full score, but back when we did this video on Hirschfelden, that was the primary shot we were going for. Now, as I mentioned, we're going to have to do some things a little bit differently than in the original, because if we were to do the exact same thing, we really only could shoot Whitetail, Blacktail, and Coyotes with a 223 here on Layton, so we also have the 270, and that's pretty much going to allow us to ethically take Moose, Black Bear, and Elk, but still with the same basic concept of a pretty underpowered weapon, and there are a number of bull elk over here, and I think, again, we probably do want to go for a neck shot. Now that I believe is the best one. I've not had much success, even with like the 300, going for a heart shot on elk, so that is going to be what we attempt at least, as long as that guy will stay out of our way. That went a little bit better even than the blacktail where it immediately dropped, but when we recorded the video over on Hirschfeld, and I don't even remember if we did attempt to take any, like, bison or anything like that, there was no proper ammo harvest check. If the class of the weapon you used was below the class of the animal, you were good, but unfortunately we can't do that now, so kinda having to make a minor adjustment here to be able to take some of the bigger game. I will say that I was kinda hoping this wouldn't be the case. If we were up just a little bit higher, we'd have been middle neck and lower neck, and I thought maybe we had done that and maybe that's why he immediately dropped. Because we saw with the black tail just like one neck hit was not an immediate drop shot. But I think if we were to hit, you know, both the like lower and middle neck on a black tail with the 223, it would immediately drop. And I just thought it might make it a bit more interesting if the 270 was like, I guess, on equal grounds as far as how weak it is on these bigger animals. We'll maybe see on moose. Actually, there is a bull right there that we can maybe test it on. Now them, we would attempt a hard shot, but we'll try to see if we can get something lined up maybe a little more straight on. It almost feels like unfair how close we are, but they just happen to be drinking right here. That is a hard shot, and that's kind of what I wanted to see, and we used to kind of mess with that a lot with the 270. I think at one point we were testing things, and it might be the case that like single lung and heart is an insta-kill. I don't even remember, but we used to do a lot of moose hunting with the 270 back in the day, and... I did know that there's a bit of room for error with those attempted heart shots, but yeah, kind of similar then with the 223 on Blacktail and the 270 on Moose at least, so it sort of fits. Now that is a really cool find. It's a level 3, 164 to 237 melanistic bull elk, and they're not the most obvious when you see them, but if we zoom in there, you can tell he's a lot darker. and. There's something about certain melanistic species, and Roosevelt elk are one of them, where they still have like some of the sort of features of the commons. So for instance, the neck and head area of that melanistic still are darker than the rest of the body, but there's no way that's not a mela, and of course we're going to have to use the 270 here. I don't know what the gold requirement on Roosevelt elk is. I want to say, at least at one point, the kind of like droopy tine racks could make it, so we definitely have to make sure we make this shot just in case. But either way, that is not a rare that you find that often. It just wouldn't even be right if it was that easy. Unfortunately, on our way over there, kind of going slow because of bad wind, the zone actually ended, so this zone time is 4.30 to 8. 
a lot of them end at 8.30, but unfortunately for that one, it's an early ending one and they were long gone, but you could probably see on the map when I opened it, we do have his track. I think he's hanging with this particular group. I don't see any more, but we're going to kind of keep following them, and he's got to be up here somewhere. The issue is, of course, we're running with the 270, so just seeing him in the distance and firing off a quick shot isn't the best idea. So we'll have to really take our time here. At the very least, after all that, we got a bit of a break. Still gonna have to kind of make an accurate shot here. Let's see if he'll kind of stand up alert again. What I don't want to do, really, is take a neck shot when he's facing away. It's a tougher shot to hit, in my opinion, but he came back nervous. Now he's alarmed. I don't think that's gonna kill him. I tried to get that neck shot when I saw fleeing. Now I'm not sure what he's gonna do. There's almost no way that's a kill shot. If they're gonna come back again, we'll kind of set up for a better position. Maybe even just a little farther away, we might be good. That was probably a poor decision, but it's been a little rough trying to track him so far. He's barely even hurt. I mean, he's still at the max health. I'm not sure if they have a proper, like, injured feeding animation, though, so he might just stand there like that. In which case, <laughs> we're gonna have to, like, alert him again, I guess? Because there's just no real shot in there, and I really don't trust the 270 to get the heart. So, this becomes a lot more dire, because we can't mess up the shot this time. If we do, we're just going to simply not pass the two shots harvest check. I still want to try to go for neck just to, I guess, stay within the spirit of the video. I'm surprised that we can't get him alert. Alright, he should still have like a proper alert animation, I think. I thought he should do what these guys do. Okay, he's sort of doing it. Not exactly what I thought he would do, to be honest, but maybe if he'll face back this way? We might have to go for a broadside heart shot then, because he's just not really cooperating. We actually got that. I didn't think we would, but I wasn't sure what else to do. Like, it was so risky to try to neck shot, but... I think, technically, we're going to get the full medal. It took far longer than I expected to get to show this, but like I was saying, it's got like the darker head patch and lighter body patch, and then still almost white on the rump, but pretty good looking out. Let's see what we ended up with. It is a silver at 237. Yeah, he never had a chance of gold if gold is 272. We were close, a little behind the neck on that first shot, and then double lung heart. What is that? If you guys can see, the heart hitbox, for one, is not shaped like a heart, but also isn't really in the right spot. Actually, I would say it's very much in the wrong spot. Before anything else weird happens, let's taxamize that, but... I don't think it's really the fact that the hitbox is down there that helped us. I think we're in the right spot, regardless. That's so odd, I've never seen that happen. I didn't pay attention on the other elk, we're gonna have to go get another one and try to find out if they're all like that, but that's still really cool. I wish he wasn't the Droopy Tines rack. We have one kind of like decent albino elk, which has the same rack with like the, the Drooping Tines, but still, a Melanistic Bull is quite neat. We'll have to see maybe what we can do with that in the second lodge. I don't know that there is a better animal to test something on than a level one bull elk. Now we will have to be careful. I want to go for a next shot again, and we already messed up once. But, the angle we have, kind of through there, should work. Now, I don't know, maybe it's only when you hit the heart that that happens. Maybe it was just like a super specific case. But the shot that we went for there was kind of low enough in the neck that it may have gone through and hit the heart. I'm not sure if we were quite low enough. But I really just want to see if all the heart hitboxes look like that or what the deal was. By the way, glad that our elk was a level 3 mounistic and not the level 1. Heart looks just fine on that, so there's two options. It's either the fact that we hit the heart that caused it, or somehow, like, because he was stepping forward, maybe the heart hitbox got kind of, like, stretched out. But either way, I don't think it's something to necessarily worry about in normal cases trying to shoot an elk, especially, you know, going for a heart shot, because you should be able to get a lung in pretty much any circumstance going for a heart if you would miss it. So I think it'll be fine no matter what, but I wanted to... Kind of look into that just in case. 
I really kind of expected to be hunting more deer in this video, but I guess when a melanistic elk shows up, that's kind of what happens, but now we do have a level 5 blacktail, and we sort of are faced with a similar scenario with the elk. We can either go for a safe shot, which kind of goes against the entire point of the rest of the video, or we just, you know, kind of risk it and try to make a next shot. And it is a small rack blacktail, so I think because we wouldn't be potentially ruining maybe our personal best, I'm willing to attempt that shot. And it would be nice to actually drop it with the 223, so we'll try to alert him here. By the way, good estimate up to 198, so I think he has a decent shot. That is going to get him to go alert. We'll see if he'll kind of stand with his neck sort of straight for us. I don't love that. That got a little bit better, though. And that's going to be our second potentially trophy animal down with a small caliber. And not only that, improvement, I guess. Only took us one shot that time instead of two. But I didn't think he looked huge when he lifted his head there. Yeah, he's a gold at 175. I kind of expected that. I know with a smaller rack, you need like a wider frame generally. And he didn't really have that. So, proud of the shot anyway. Unfortunately, not going to be a trophy lodge edition. Although, even if he was a diamond, really with the small rack, he probably wouldn't have been. But I do think on that note, we are actually going to head back to the trophy lodge. It is kind of unfortunate that the only multi-mount with Roosevelt Elk requires the biggest possible platform, because there are actually none of those in the Spring Creek Manor Lodge, but still pretty cool to have this guy standing by himself. I wish he would have been a little bit bigger, but like I said at the time, at least he wasn't the level 1, and I'm pretty sure it's our first Melanistic Elk on the new system, so I'm glad to actually get to add that even to the second trophy lodge, but as I kind of said there, we didn't really shoot as many deer as I intended to, so we might actually do kind of like a, a second iteration of this, maybe on a different map that doesn't have as much big game, and just sort of see what we can do with that. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video, so thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.